Welcome to What's the Latest in Severe Asthma, a Monday Morning Joe educational series. I'm Dr. Ray Panettieri, Professor of Medicine at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and Vice Chancellor for the Institute of Translational Medicine at Rutgers in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Monday Morning Joe is designed to be a quick-hitting, coffee-talk style program. During this second episode of the four-part asthma series, we're going to discuss the underdiagnosis of severe asthma and strategies to identify and evaluate patients with severe disease. The goal of this episode is to help improve our assessment of disease control so that we may better manage our patients with severe asthma. Before we begin, remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so you won't miss new episodes in the series. Are you ready? Oh, let's get started. Why is it important to assess disease severity and control? Why is it important? Because asthma comes in several flavors. Severe asthma, difficult to treat asthma, severe asthma is uncontrolled despite adherence with optimized high-dose ICS lava therapy that worsens when high-dose treatment is decreased. Difficult to treat asthma is defined as asthma that is uncontrolled despite prescribing medium and high-dose ICS lava treatment or that requires high-dose ICS lava treatment to maintain good symptom control and reduce exacerbations. So how prevalent is uncontrolled asthma, 60%, 60% of adults and 44% of children have uncontrolled asthma. That's an amazing statistic. The prevalence of asthma attacks, about 39% of children and about 40% in adults 18 years or older. Asthma control has two domains, two symptom control, and future risk of adverse outcomes. Symptom control is frequency and severity of wheeze, chest tightness, shortness of breath, and cough. What are the future risks of adverse outcomes? Well, it's an exacerbation history and the patient's lung function. So why is asthma control commonly overestimated? What are the ramifications of overestimating asthma control? Current evidence clearly demonstrates a discordance between patient and provider assessment of the level of asthma control. Patients may have a different meaning or understanding of control. How fast their symptoms are alleviated with rescue therapy. A numerical asthma control tool, such as the Asthma Control Test, act may overestimate control. When control is overestimated, what's the problem? What's the problem? That the underlying risk for exacerbations can occur. Those are poor adherence, comorbidities, or the need for step-up treatment. These are not adequately addressed if you overestimate control. So what are some best practices for evaluating asthma severity and disease control. Which do I often use? Well, in broad categories, it's really simple. Symptom control, inhaler technique adherence and compliance, objective measures of airflow or lung function testing, identifying triggers and exposures, and the use of biomarkers. When we talk about symptom control, we typically use valid and reliable questionnaires like the AIRQ, which assesses not only symptoms but exacerbation history, the ACQ or the asthma control test. Lung function testing gives us a practical number associated with patients' lung function, and that helps in the diagnosis and the prediction of exacerbations. And the biomarkers I use, which I find very important, is pheno, the fractionated exhaled nitric oxide level, blood eosinophils, and specific IgE. These biomarkers will identify the type of asthma that the patient manifests. The most important point is taking care of the patient and the patient's symptoms and listening to the patient is really important. Are their symptoms of chest tightness, cough, and wheeze alleviated with current therapy? 
I will ask that question, maybe within the context of the asthma control test or the air cue test, but I also reinforce it by asking them directly how many nocturnal awakenings they have in a week. Have they used oral steroids, recently been in an ER, or been hospitalized? What do you look for as markers of successful response or failure? Well, the patient has required oral steroids, has had an exacerbation. That's a clear failure. If the patient's symptoms are daily requiring reliever therapy, that's clearly not meeting goals. And again, if the biomarkers remain high, like the pheno greater than 20 parts per billion, or the patient has substantial numbers of eosinophils, I'm starting to be concerned that we're not getting adequate target engagement of therapies. So I use a composite. I ask the patient about their use of oral steroids, exacerbation history, but right after that, or as important, is are the patient's symptoms controlled? Are reliever use diminished? So what's the clear takeaways? By and large, uncontrolled asthma is still very, very common. Not only that, the exacerbation histories in patients at a time when we have tremendous new therapies is still substantial. It is important to have objective measures of airflow, that is spirometry or pulmonary function, and that should be coupled with patient symptoms. We need to be aware of oral corticosteroid use associated with exacerbations, and remember that some of the valid and reliable tools out there may overestimate asthma control, and it's really contingent on you to engage the patient, ask these critical questions, and formulate a therapeutic plan to engage targets of inflammation and asthma. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to check back frequently for new episodes in this series on Exchange CME YouTube page. You can also visit the exchangecme.com for free access to other CME programming in a variety of therapeutic areas. And again, thanks. And we'll see you on the next episode, Monday Morning Joe.